friends, old minnow boys. New weekend, new adventure. We're trying something brand new we've never done before. What are we doing, Zachy? We are winter camping in the Pigeon River Country. Yes, winter camping deep in the Pigeon River Country. The next 24 hours we're gonna be spending at Cornwall Creek flooding. This is a special place to us. We've been there quite a bit. Looking forward to spending the next 24 hours there because the future of Cornwall is uncertain at best. There is a possibility that Cornwall won't be there next year for us to enjoy. So we're gonna take advantage of every minute that we can and soak in everything that Cornwall has to offer over the next 24 hours. We're excited to bring you along on the journey. Stay tuned, it's gonna be fun. Going to find a camp spot. Here we are on the Cornwall Creek Dam. You can hear the water pouring down there. We're not going to get close to it, but here's the back side of the dam going down to Cornwall Creek. Just a culvert down there. So we are hoping that we are going to find a nice flat camping spot here on the other side of the dam. This is technically the shore to shore trail. Uh, that we're, goes right across the top of the dam here. So we're gonna get on the other side here, just off the shore to shore trail. We double checked with the DNR just to make sure that it's okay to camp here. You cannot camp in the day use area, but as long as you're outside of the day use area, and as long as you're at least a mile away from a state forest campground, you cannot be within a mile of a state forest campground if you're gonna be doing this uh, kind of rustic camping. So we are well over a mile from the nearest state forest campground, which is Pine Grove. Um, so yeah, we got to find a, a flat spot here where hopefully we can uh, set up camp. All right, guys, we found a spot, we made our decision. We had to decide, we really hadn't decided yet whether or not we were going to be ice camping, technically actually setting up camp on the ice or if we wanted to be on shore. So we talked about it, we looked at some different spots here and I think ultimately we don't wanna to have to deal with the melting ice and a wet floor in our camp. So we're gonna set up on the shore. It's not the most flat spot, but it's gonna be better I think than having a sopping wet floor in tomorrow morning when we wake up. So we're going to head back across the dam, get our stuff loaded up as best we can and start making trips and getting our, uh, getting our camp set up. You ready? Let's do this. Let's do it. All right, friends, we got, right. Our, got our second load, all yep. our ice fishing gear. So this is our last load. We're leaving the truck, headed over to camp. We're gonna have some lunch. Let's do this. Ah, this is the life. <laughs> this is the life. It is time for lunch. We are here in our camp. We're in our new Otter Vortex Resort shanty. We've set it up here on the shore. Uh, this is gonna be a perfect overnight tent for us, insulated. We've got the heater running over here. It's warming up in here real quick. All the windows open. Beautiful view out onto Cornwall flooding. Absolutely gorgeous in here. And uh, it's toasty. Yeah. We got the uh, yep. foam mats going here on the floor. So check this out. Sock feet, baby. That's right. <laughs> Boots are off. Nice and toasty in here. So 
we're going to uh, figure out what we're going to eat for lunch. Yep. And then maybe just rest for a little bit and chillax. It was a lot of work to get in here and set up. And then uh, we're going to get out and punch some holes and see if we can catch an evening bite, some panfish or whatever we might be able to find in here. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later, but let's have some lunch. Yeah. friends we just wrapped up with a delicious hot chef boyardee lunch <laughs> we're gonna head out and fish here in uh in just a little bit it's pretty cold and windy out though we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time fishing this afternoon we're gonna be doing a bunch of fishing tomorrow but i did want to take just a quick second to talk about safety we're brand new to this but we've done a ton of research uh, over the last few months regarding ice camping and winter camping in general because we do spend a lot of time out here in the pigeon river country a lot of the time a lot of places out here we do not get any cell service that's a problem when you want to try to stay in touch with uh with loved ones family etc people get worried when you're out in the big wild wondering if you're okay if anything might have happened to you if you got lost etc so one thing that we have really enjoyed and highly recommend is this device right here. This is the Garmin InReach Mini. And what this is, is a satellite-based GPS communication device. It does a ton of things. I'm not going to talk about all of them. The main thing that we use it for and why we really love it is this will actually allow me to send text messages with my cell phone when we don't have any cell service. Really from anywhere in the world, uh, I connect my phone to the Garmin via Bluetooth and through the app on my phone, I can send a text message even when we're in the middle of the Pigeon River country with no cell service whatsoever. We can stay connected. We can send text messages back and forth, you know, let people know that we're okay or when we're gonna be, uh, you know, headed home, etc. So we're never disconnected. Uh, the other cool thing about this, it does have on the side here, a dedicated SOS button. Heaven forbid, if we ever did get in trouble, if we did get in a, in a rough situation and we needed help, you can literally just push and hold that SOS button. It's going to send a distress signal via satellite communication to the Garmin SOS emergency response system. It's also gonna send them GPS coordinates so they know exactly where you're located. They'll contact local authorities, local emergency response, and get someone dispatched out to help. So really just a great tool, gives us a lot of peace of mind, especially when we're out here deep in the Pigeon River country, wherever we're at, at fishing, exploring, etc. Highly recommend the Garmin in reach. Just that extra level of safety and comfort, knowing that you can stay connected. And if you do get in a tight spot and you need help, you can get that help regardless of whether or not you have cell service. <laughs> All right, quick update. It is 4:10. We got some snow coming down out there. Check it out. We got little snow tornadoes whipping across the old flooding here. So we got about an hour and a half, maybe a daylight. We're gonna go pop some holes, pop up the shanty, see if we can find something. No secret spot that we're going to. We're just gonna kind of set up on a random spot, maybe try to find a little drop off. Hopefully we can put a fish on the ice tonight. If we can't, that's okay. We got all day tomorrow, but we're gonna head out there see what we can get done. Are ice fishing for the first time on Cornwall, boys and girls. Oh yeah. So we got the shanty set up in the absolute hurricane that's going on outside. <laughs> uh, it's windy. We're sitting in 16 feet of water and we drop down. It looks like just a totally flat bottom, but then we saw fish come through. We saw a really nice mark that came up off the bottom. So we just said, hey, let's quit messing around. It is plenty cold and windy out. Let's just get down there and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna drop the underwater camera down. There we go, that's what you did. Oh, whoa. Bam. Okay. Oh, I wanna be, this? I wanna be careful now because... All right, so I know we're at the right height right now. Yeah, that's a fish. For real? It was a fish. What was it? Where? I think it was a bass. For real? I think oh, it was a oh. bass. So, yep, a it's a bass. That's a bass. Big bass. Is he going at you? Turn the camera. Turn yep, the yep, camera. Yep, 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 yep. Go. Got him? Yep. Yes. yes. Zach's hooked up on a bass, baby. Dude, you're hooked up. 
Yep. Great job, buddy. <laughs> I think he's hooked pretty good, too. I hope so. I think he's hooked. How cool is that? How cool is that? Dude, Just oh like my that. word. This, this is going to be your biggest ice bass, I think. Yep, just keep working them. You're doing a good job. True. Yep, easy, easy. All right, I'm going to tighten your drag just a little bit, yep. okay? We got pretty light line on here, so... Oof. You don't want to pull too hard. Just kind of take them nice and easy. That's what I'm doing right now. Yep, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Hooked up, baby. That did not take long. How no. cool is that? Oh, All he's right. going for a run. All yep. Right. Oh, oh. Here we go. This might be a decent bass. This, I think this is a decent bass, buddy. I think this is a decent bass. You had a good hook set on him, though, so... Yeah. He's just got that little Haley on, guys. Oh, this is awesome! <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. All right, okay. Uh, okay. He's not huge, but it's a nice bass. He's probably 14, 15 inches. Right. He was right there at the hole, but he was just wrapped around the transducer. There he is, there he is. Yeah! <laughs> nice, buddy! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Nice job! All right, he's probably 13 inches, yep. a little bit smaller than I thought, but look at that, right in the top of the yep. lip. Awesome. Nice job. Wow. Look at that fish, guys. That did not take awesome. long. Awesome. Is, is this going to be Dude, we could too up. big? We could double up. Is this going to be too big or no? No, no. Oh, he's going to eat me right now. Yep. Nope. Nice. Nice. Alright. We both we, we both caught it back. <laughs> nice job, buddy. The little Cornwall largemouth. I'm going to get him right back down the hole. See you, buddy. He was good for that. Oh, here we go. Is that a gill? That's a good gill. Oh, that's a good gill. Oh my word. That's good a tank gill. of a gill. It's that's a, a gill. tank of a gill. It's a big gill. That is a tank of a gill. I mean, comparatively. I, I think. It's not a tank tank, but it's a nice pumpkin seed. Oh, ho, ho, dude. Look at that right there. Good I mean, fish. That's, that's a slab. I, I would call that a slab. It's seven and a half. Push an eight inch gill. <laughs> there it goes. There's another one. Although, what is oh, that? Oh, oh, oh. Perch. Perch. That's a good perch, though. It's a good perch. Go! Yes! Yes! You got him? Yep, got him, got him, got him. Got him. This is a good perch. It's good perch, okay. <laughs> yeah! Dude! That's like a nine inch perch. That's like a nine inch perch, oh, boys and girls. Dude! Look at that beautiful that perch. That's awesome! Oh, that's such a beautiful fish, isn't it? Okay. Alright, we just popped the lowest setting of the underwater light here, guys, on the. Markham Pursuit HDL. Love this underwater camera. It is so fun watching these fish come in and interact and knowing exactly when to set the hook. If you're newer to the channel, you may not know, I, we did a review on this camera. I'll link that above, uh, but it is a great underwater camera option. And just once you start with an underwater camera, ice fishing, you know, as far as jigging goes, it's kind of tough to, it's kind of tough to not have it super cool and even in combination with your graph um, it's just a lot of fun not only to be able to watch it in real time live and know exactly what's going on down there you can see the species before you catch it but then also to have it recorded and to be able to review it and you know share it with friends family etc we absolutely love the underwater camera whoever invented it be no surprised <laughs> yeah like if i had not looked at the graph oh oh Big gill, big gill. That's a big gill. That is big a gill. Tank. Oh, he came and crushed it. That is a tank, I bet. This is a nice gill. I bet that's even bigger than the last one. Oh my word. Oh my. <laughs> that is a slab, boys and girls. Oh, Look at that. Oh my word. That's got to be pushing 10 inches. That is a slab. Okay. Absolutely crushed. The tiny tantrum with a waxy on it.
Alright guys, it's just about 6 o'clock. It kind of seemed like at 5.30, but it just kind of died off. So, we're going to pack up. I don't know about you, I couldn't be no. more stoked and nope. happy about it. I mean, yeah. we caught, what, two bass. Mm -hmm. I missed another bass. Yep. Still I caught on. two really nice gills and a perch. Yep. Super cool to get out here for yep. literally just 90 minutes here right before uh, dusk and catch all those fish, see them on the camera. Yep. Absolutely awesome. And the best part is we've got all day tomorrow. We're staying right here. So we're going to head back over to shore where we've got camp set up. And uh, I think we're going to build a little campfire. Yep. Roast some hot dogs, s'mores. Mm -hmm. Boom. Let's do it. Movie night? Oh, oh. oh and movie night. Forgot about that. It's going to be an awesome night. We are back at camp. We're going to make a campfire because What's for dinner? Hot dogs. Yeah, we're gonna roast some hot dogs on a campfire. So we gotta find some nice dead wood that's already down here. Yep. Hopefully get a fire started. So let's see if we can get her done. <laughs> All right, friends, we are hunkered in the shanty for the night. Yep. We've got some setup to do with our cots, air mats, sleeping bags, all that good stuff. So this will be the first time ever that we're actually setting the entire thing up. So we're gonna learn as we go, but uh, yeah, let's get cozied in, buddy. All right, guys, we have got the sack set up for overnight camping. Uh, we've got our cots over here. One on this side, one on this side. We've got our switchboard. And miscellaneous junk. We've got battery charging for cameras and stuff, etc. And then we've got a carbon monoxide detector. Make sure we have one when you go on camping like this. Then, uh, yeah, we're gonna cozy in and watch movie. Good morning. Good morning. We survived the night. Our first night ever winter camping. Yes. It was an interesting night to say the least. We did not sleep the greatest, but we learned some things to do different and better next time. <laughs> One is the windows. Yeah, the windows had lots of condensation and were dripping. Was was one thing, but we finally got that figured out, or at least got moved out of the way. It took me a while. I don't know about you, buddy, but it took me a while to get used to all the sounds. Like, there's so many different sounds. It was pretty windy overnight. The trees blowing, cracking, the snow falling on the roof. It was just a lot. I, it didn't take long for me. Yeah, good. All right, I think we're going to get moving. Oh, check that out. Beautiful morning on Cornwall. Cloudy. Hopefully it seems like the wind has died down a little bit. Oh, we gotta get out there. I didn't check the temperature yet. Let me look. I guess I could turn the light on. Woo! We survived. We survived. We got most of our batteries charged overnight. Most. Heater did really well. Even monoxide detector even went lower. Yeah, carbon monoxide level was absolutely fine. We'll talk maybe a little bit more about that later this afternoon. Scrambled eggs and corned beef hash are on the menu for breakfast. All right, boys and girls, we are fishing. We are fishing. Oh, here we go, fish, 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 bass. Yes. Bass, 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 he's gonna eat. 
Oh, that was a horrible hook set, but I got him. Oh, there we go. Now he knows he's hooked. Oh, I lost him. No. Yep. Yeah, man, I had a terrible hook set. I didn't, it was like I didn't have my bail closed or something. Yeah. Oh, whoa, crappy, crappy, crappy. Go, 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 crap. Wait, 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 wait. No, that's a crappy, 100%. No, no, no. He's gonna come back, he's gonna come back, don't worry. He, he didn't grab your waxy, he grabbed the... Well, that was really sick. Is he going to come back? So right now, the DNR is planning on, this coming summer, they're planning on starting to drain it. And then, ultimately, they want to remove the dam. And it's going to be gone. Alright, friends. Right. Mid-morning update. It is 10.27 a.m. We've been jigging here for maybe a little over a half hour. We met some cool folks from downstate who were coming out looking for perch. Got to chat with them for a few minutes about what's going on here at Cornwall. We've only seen two fish. I missed that bass, unfortunately, and then we had that crappie that we both kind of missed. Um, it was cool to see him on the underwater camera, but that is all. We, we haven't seen anything here for the last, what, half hour, yeah. basically. So we're going to go ahead and set a tip up out there so we got another line on the water. We're going to put the underwater camera on that as well. Cornwall flooding. It was stocked at one time with muskies. There's lots of debate over whether or not there might be any muskies left in here, but uh, we're going to put a big bait down on a tip up. We're going to put the underwater camera on it, and who knows? I mean... We could literally confirm yeah. today whether or not there still are musky in mm. Cornwall flooding. <laughs> like, how cool would that be to yeah. see one on the underwater cam? Yeah. Is it likely? Probably not. No. But you never know till you try. We could also get a ba you know a big bass over there on the tip up as well. But who knows? It'll be fun to have another camera underwater and see what we see. <laughs> All right, tip up is set, it's three minutes to 11. We're gonna jig here for maybe like 15 minutes, see if we can't possibly get something to come in here. We got the underwater cam set up out there on the tip up. Got a big old sucker on there. Who knows what might happen? We have no expectations, but we'll see. So we're gonna jig here for just a little bit longer and then Zach wants to go explore the island behind us. So we're gonna go check out that island and explore a little bit and have some fun. So let's see if we can jig something up here. <laughs> oh, fish! Gill, gill, gill! Big gill! Got him! Got him, nice! It's a big gill! Oh, it's a big gill! Oh my word, oh my word! Oh, my drag is still super loose! Go on, come on, get this one! Oh, okay, okay, we're good! I'm gonna reel up! Uh, he's in the camera already, doggone it! No, he's gone! He's gone! Is he? Yeah! We are not having luck this morning at all. That's the third fish that we've missed. All right, friends, it is almost noon. Yep. We're gonna take a break from jigging in the shanty. We're gonna head back to camp, and have some lunch. But first, we're gonna explore the island on Cornwall. <laughs> island is explored yep we are definitely going to be back possibly camping on this island maybe later this winter possibly we will see but we got some garbage cleaned up so that's cool it is now time to head for lunch back at camp yeah. we're cozy back in the shanty got the heater going nice yep. and warm back at camp and we got lunch check this out we got meat sticks you got two different kinds of cheese. You got some crackers and some grapes. What kind of sausage is that? Venison sausage from Odeer. Yeah. 
All right, let's eat. All right, guys, we're finished up with lunch. We're gonna be heading back out to hopefully find some fish here in just a few minutes, but wanted to talk about one more safety thing. We talked earlier about the Garmin InReach satellite communicator, which we love and depend on out here. But then also, if you're gonna be in an enclosed space like your shanty and you've got a gas heater of any kind running, whether that is gas heater like the little buddy heater that we use, as well as our camp stove that runs on butane, all of those things, you can have issues with carbon monoxide. Extremely dangerous, and so it's absolutely essential that you have a carbon monoxide detector. We did a ton of research on this. We watched a lot of videos. Clayton Chick, if you're familiar with him, put out a great video on this just a few months ago. After all of our research, we landed on this Forensics Detectors Carbon Monoxide Unit. This is waterproof. It's shockproof. It is a little bit more expensive than just a standard household unit that you might buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or a big box store. However, uh, you know, this thing is rugged. And when you're banging around, you know, in your ice shanty with your gear bags and tackle bags and all that good stuff, it's great to have something that's not just made of cheap plastic and is gonna get knocked around and, and ultimately maybe not work when you need it to. As soon as we started talking about coming out here, winter camping, ice camping, we were looking for a good dependable unit, something that we knew was gonna work. We're not taking a gamble on something this serious. Carbon monoxide is absolutely a killer. You need to have a good solid carbon monoxide detector that you can trust when you're gonna be in an enclosed space like this with a heater, with a camp stove, etc., So, carbon monoxide detector, always have it with you. back in the shanty we are back jigging and uh we do have one big update to share when we started this video we said we were doing an overnighter that's actually not true plans have changed what are we doing zaki we are staying one more night yeah we're doing a double overnighter we're actually going to be staying here tonight as well so two nights in a row out here at cornwall we're super stoked about that that's going to give us the whole evening here right up until dark to fish then we're just going to head back to camp We'll have another supper. We'll sleep tonight. We do have to get up early, early tomorrow morning and pack up and get out of here. Yeah, we're staying two nights. Bam! All right, guys, we're gonna set Jaw Jacker uh, a little bit shallower into that uh, eight to ten lens. We we don't know. Maybe the fish are a little bit shallower. We're in sixteen feet of water here, so we just don't know. Maybe the fish are swimming up shallower. So we're gonna try down there, see if there's any action up shallower. Oh, bass, bass, get ready, wait. Okay. Wow, he was spooky. Yeah. See if he comes back. Yep, yeah, he's looking at you. Coming up from the bottom. Little jigs. He's coming he's at you. He's coming at you. Yep, yeah, he's coming at nope. you. Nope. Ooh, interesting. Interesting, okay. That's the first, that is literally the first fish that's been finicky. Right? Yep. I think that's the first fish we've ever seen that hasn't bit. That's good. Here he is. Here he is. Coming back. Or is that? Yep. Yeah, same one. Coming at you. He's gonna bite. He's gonna eat. Wait. Oh, no. He's oh, behind. Nope. Is he gonna mm -hmm. eat me? Yep. Oh. 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 Super finicky biter. He might come out. He might come back. I, yeah. I wish I had meat on both of my hooks. Nope. Oh. Nope. Oh. Up top. behind yeah I knew that. that's cool though we're seeing fish yeah. oh I just picked it up oh bass coming in hot got him bam nice feels a little bit better is he out now yeah he's out okay. 
Huh? There we go. Yeah. It's the biggest one we probably yeah. Mm -hmm. There he is, guys. All right. Not bad. That's pushing 14 inches. Not yep. a bad fish. Let's get a quick picture. Oh, oops, flat splash. Yeah. Back oh, fish. It. He's on you. Wait, 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 wait. Go, 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 go. Done. Good kill, good kill. Okay, keep the pressure that on. Him. No, Go he's on. up. That, okay. that's it. We're doing it. Oh, fast. Background. Here we go. Two. 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 Oh. Get ready. There was three total. Oh, no way. Wait, wait. There was three. Got him. Got him. Little tiny dude. Huh? <laughs> About 10 inches. Nice. Really didn't we didn't fish that much. Truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, coming at me. What is that? Sure? Yep, a little tiny bass. Um, that's gonna be tiny, tiny. <laughs> <laughs> About a uh, eight incher. <laughs> Go home, grow big. I still have no interest. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see it. It's another little bass. No! Oh! Ooh. There we go. There we go. There he is, guys. That's probably pushing seven inches. All right, guys. It's getting super dark. It's quarter to six now. So we're going to wrap up on the fishing portion. So we're going to get everything packed up here, get all of our ice fishing stuff packed up, get it back to the truck because we're done fishing. We're going to get all that back to the truck and then head back to camp for dinner. To the truck. To the truck. Good job. Oh yeah. Mm. Tasty boys and girls. All right, friends, it's nine o'clock. Done with dinner. All cozied in for the night. We got to get up super early in the morning. The alarm is set for 6 a.m. Because <laughs> we got to get packed up because we've got some plans with some friends after church tomorrow morning. So we're going to get moving bright and early. But uh, yeah, it was a great day. Mm-hmm. We will see you in the morning. Good night. Zachy. We gotta start getting up, buddy. It's 6.30. How you feeling? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Good morning, Cornwall. All right, guys, we got camp all packed up. Everything is clean. Take nothing but pictures and video <laughs> and leave nothing but footprints. We are headed back across Cornwall to the truck and out of the big wild. All right, friends, that is gonna be a wrap on what we thought was gonna be a one day adventure on the big wild. It turned into two days. We are headed out now. Unbelievable time, had an absolute blast. Thank you so much for following along. We're gonna be talking a lot more this winter about Cornwall Creek flooding and dam and everything that's going on there. I am optimistic there's enough people that absolutely love Cornwall that if we all work together, I believe that we can come up with a solution to save the dam. So be sure to like, share, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, all those things. We really appreciate the support. We will catch you in the next video. Old Minnow Boy, out. out.